So it's finally time to start the projects with this fabric. Hey guys, it's Wolf Maiden, and today I'm going to be making a cloth choker out of this black and gold brocade fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and hand sew since I still don't really have a dedicated space to sew yet. On one of my streams, I had already cut out the fabric that I was going to use, or at least one part of it. So I'll be using this. It won't be this broad, but this is about the length. Originally, I was going to do a choker with a snap on the back of it, but now I have decided instead to use these eyelets here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that and then we'll see what we get in the end. <laughs> I mostly wing these if you know me at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So here's what I'm using to make the choker. I have this brocade fabric I got at a thrift store, some ribbon, thread, scissors, a needle, and I do have these eyelets, but I actually changed them out for grommets, you'll see later. And then I have a ruler, and I also do use some black fabric, whatever we had on hand, which seemed to be like not a natural fabric, it was more stretchy, but it's all the black fabric that I had on hand, so I just used that for the back of my choker. So now I just took the black fabric that I mentioned, and I went ahead and traced the fabric that I had already cut out so that I have the matching bit of black fabric. I, I'm using fabric chalk here. This is not a necessity if you just wanna wing it, because especially if you're sewing right sides to each other and then flipping it over, it doesn't matter as much, at least in my opinion. But obviously everybody's different, do your thing. I, I just like winging things a lot more, but uh, that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna use a pattern in the future or anything like that. It's just, I usually am kind of less precise and and that stuff. So yeah, so I traced it and then I went ahead and I cut it out. This was fabric I was pretty sure I could not press with a iron. So I didn't do that. The little kind of wrinkle you see in the middle of it isn't actually visible and it's the back anyway. So if it was, it wouldn't really matter, but. Then I just finished cutting it up. So then I put them together. I made sure that they were together the way that I wanted to sew them. Then I went ahead and put a line where I was gonna sew so that I could sew it in a straight line as best I could. As you can see, it didn't really work out that way on the other side, but it's a good guideline. It helped me out and I did correct the lines where they weren't straight. Then I went ahead and pinned everything just to make sure that everything was going to stay still when I did actually start sewing. Then finally, after all that prep, it was time to start sewing. It was a little hard to see the black thread and I just did a back stitch to secure things. And it's a lot more fun to craft while talking or hanging out with friends. And so I'm lucky to be a part of a really great community of other LARPers and was able to chat with them while I was crafting. At this point, I was just listening mostly, but <laughs> still nice. Once it was done, this is what it looked like. The line there in the middle that isn't ironed down looks horrific, but I promise it doesn't stay like that for long. I then went ahead and cut off the excess on the side so when I flipped it over, it wasn't gonna be so bulky. I was very nervous at this part. It was the did I stitch it correctly moment once I was done pulling through and making it right side up. Mm -hmm. 
What I forgot to record was when I also sewed the open end up, but I did sew the open end up once it was all the way right. And here's where the grommets come in. This is the grommet toolkit I used. I got it from Home Depot. And basically you put the two pieces together with the fabric in between using a little anvil, a little tool they have, and a hammer. I was really scared at this point. <laughs> but yeah, I, I had to hammer it kind of hard. I have two wood pieces underneath where I was hammering it and the paper towel just to protect the fabric. Turned out pretty good, I think. And I just did that for all four of the holes that I had made. And then onto the ribbon. This was the way that I was going to secure the choker to my neck. So I cut the ribbon, I laced it through, and here's the finished project. I really love it. I'm a big fan of chunky chokers and this is gorgeous. I love the fabric so much and I'm so excited to make the rest of the set. My hair mostly covers the back of it, but if I ever have it up, you can kind of see what it might look like. I didn't have someone to take extra care in making sure that the ribbon would look good, so this is what I got. So that's how I made this choker. I'm super excited about it. It ended up a bit wonky on the sides just because I was expecting a fourth of an inch rivet rather than a half inch, but you know what? It looks really awesome. My hair covers the back, most of the back anyway, and if I were to put my hair up in a ponytail or something, um, as long as I got it tied in a cute little ribbon or whatever and I can change out the ribbon color, I think it'll look pretty cool. My intent was to make it so that it looked as if it were like a corset kind of crossed ribbon back on my neck. So I think I did decently. It was my first time actually installing grommets. So there's that. And then I hope you guys enjoyed this little make of a choker. I think that anybody can make this. It's very easy. And if you have fabric that you like, and you want to try it out, I highly recommend it. It's very easy, even if you don't have a machine, because I hand sewed mine. If you have a machine, it's even easier. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.